Hello everyone, so I'm doing a presentation on the Walt Disney Company. My name is Kristen Rowland. And before we get too far into anything, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some very basic company information. So the company obviously is the Walt Disney Company. It's, service, uh, it's in the service sector and its industry is classified as entertainment diversified. Uh, its two biggest competitors are Time Warner and 21st Century Fox. Currently, uh, in the year 2014, they had full-time employees of 180,000. And this is up from the year before. And uh, they had a 52-week high on April 24th, 14th uh, of 10.48. And then a 52-week low just four days later at 76.88. And so their market cap over the year was $186.15 billion. And next we're going to talk about uh, some of their basic financial information, just so you can understand a little bit more about the company. So we have a total asset turnover there at the top of 1.18. So that is your sales over total assets. And this is a measure of efficiency in deploying assets. And normally, the larger the number, the better. So the Disney company is doing pretty well here. They are generating more sales than they have in total assets, which is a good thing. Below that we have our financial leverage multiplier or our equity multiplier. And that's at 1.8. And that's also pretty good. And then below that we have return on common equity. And that is your net income over shareholder equity. And that's at 24.7%. And this measures your profitability of how much money is made with all of your shareholder dollars that were invested. So this is how much money you're getting back with each dollar a shareholder invests. Below that, under profitability, we have profit margin. And that is your net income over revenue. And this pretty much uh, straightforward is how much profit are you getting for all of your revenue, how much profit are you getting out of that. Below that you have operating margin, which is your operating income over net sales. And this is what's left over after variable cost. So this also is a pretty good number at 24.22%. That essentially means that that percentage is how much you have left over after they've paid out all their variable costs. And Below that, we have your return on assets, which is net income over assets of 8.87%. And that is also pretty good. And then once you go look towards the bottom and you have this current ratio right here, and what that is, is your current assets over your current liabilities. And this is also the higher the number, the better. And since it's over one, that means there are more current assets covering. Uh, current liabilities, which you really want this. This is a, a very good indicator of a healthy company. And then you can look and see some of the basic numbers. Their, uh, under their income statement, they had a revenue of $49.9 billion. That's a lot of money. And then you can kind of look for a few minutes and check out the rest of the information before we move forward. Alright, so moving on, next we have our management. And here, we're just going to talk about some of the big management for the company. First, we have Robert A. Iger as CEO. Robert has been with the DeWalt Disney Company since 1996 as part of their senior management. He has also held several management positions within the company and became CEO in 2005. So, Thomas Staggs is next. He's COO. Staggs recently became COO in February of 2015, but has been in several key positions since 1990. He served as CFO for 12 years before he became the COO. And then, of course, next we have Jay Raskwell who is CFO currently, and Raskwell joined the Walt Disney Company in 1986 and became CFO in 2010. 
It is said that under his leadership, parks and resorts built on its strong traditions as the world's preeminent theme park operator to create a range of businesses that has made Disney a global leader in the family vacation industry. So next we have Zina Muka, who is CCO, or Chief Communications Officer. And Muka joined in 2001 and acquired her current position in 2002. Muka has received several awards, one being one of the 100 most important in-house communicators in the world by the Holmes Report. And then finally, we have Jane Parker as CHRO, or Chief Human Resources Officer. And Parker joined Disney in 1988 and accepted her current position in 2009. One of Ms. Parker's major contributions contributions of CHRO has been opening an important dialogue between Disney and its employees through a comprehensive biannual survey that engages employees at all levels and serves as the foundation for future change and progress. So next we're going to talk about the Walt Disney Company business segment. So there are five business segments and we have Disney Media Network, Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, Walt Disney Studios, Disney Consumer Products, and Disney Interactive. So first we're going to talk a little bit more about Disney Media Network. Disney Media Network is comprised in multiple areas, such as the ABC Network, Disney Channel, and ESPN. And Ben Sherwood, co-chair, Disney Media Network's president, uh, Disney ABC Television Group, is currently part of the management for them and so is John Skipper who is president of ESPN and co-chairman of Disney Media Network and over the course of 2014 Disney Media Networks raked in 21,152 million in revenue making it the company's highest revenue producing segment Walt Disney Parks and Resorts is next, and Walt Disney Parks and Resorts consists of Disney World Resort, cruise, cruise Lines, Spas, Imagineering, which creates the park concept, and several others, as you can see. In 2014, Walt Disney Parks and Resorts made $15,099 million in revenue, making them the second highest revenue producing segment in the company. And Bob Chapek chair, is chairman of the Walt Disney Parks and Resorts. Next we have the Walt Disney Studios. So the widely known Walt Disney Studios creates all the movie magic. They operate various products such as Pixar, Marvel, Touchstone, and of course the famous Disney movies. According to the Walt Disney Company financial statement, the Walt Disney Studios produces and acquires live action and animated motion pictures for worldwide distribution to the theatrical home entertainment and television market. Last year they brought in $7,278 million in revenue, which was a huge increase from $5,979 million in 2013. And currently Alan F. Horn is chairman of the Walt Disney Studios. Next, we have Disney Consumer Products. Disney Consumer Products it handles licensing, publishing, and the Disney stores throughout most of the globe. Disney Consumer Products capitalizes off of the successes of films. And because of 2014 landmark film successes, Disney Consumers brought in $3,985 million, which is up from $3,555 million in 2013. And currently managing is Michael Horn. He's the Chief Counsel of Consumer Products at Walt Disney Company. Lastly, we have Disney Interactive. Disney Interactive is a relatively more recent segment compared to the others. They produce mobile apps and games, video games, virtual games, programs, and maintain the online gateway for the Walt Disney Company. 2014, Interactive generates revenue of $1,299 million. And currently, James Pitaro is president of the Disney Interactive segment. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the beta project. So, the Walt Disney Company, compared to the SP500, shows a beta of about 0.43. Having a beta at this level isn't uncommon. 
this data essentially means there is less than half as much systematic risk as the average asset. The thing to keep in mind that is that expected return on an asset is dependent upon systematic risk. And assets with a greater beta can expect to earn more than one with a lower beta. And next we have our valuation project. And you're only going to see the company, the Walt Disney Company one here, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the competitors as well. So what's happening here is that the uh, current price is at 104.56. And the expected future value, as you can see down there, is at 81.69. But it's expected downside of 20.77%. And by looking at expected future value, it should be noted that the Walt Disney Company is expected to decline, whereas both competitors are expected to increase. Time Warner is expected to increase 37.75%. And 21st Century Fox uh, is expected to increase at 21.77%. In order for Disney to keep its price up, they would have to outdo their huge success this week. This week, last year, it is normal for prices to rise and fall over time. And although their price is expected to decline, it will still be about halfway between their competitors of Fox and Time Warner. And over the years, Disney has been very su successful and is fully expected to continue to be so for many years to come. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing. So one last thing before we sum up uh, the conference call highlight. So they had revenues up 10% last year. And part of this was because Frozen was released toward the end of 2013 and became the world's highest grossing animated film, best-selling Blu-ray, and digital copy. Uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier also made a huge impact on this, as well as several other Marvel movie releases during the year. Net income was up 27%, and the operating income was up over 300% to $475 million. This was due primarily to video release of Frozen again, Strong performance overseas, higher operating income from television. Also, media networks had higher operating income due to growth in both cable and broadcasting. There's also higher guest spending at Walt Disney World and attendance at Disneyland Resort. Adjusted EPS was up 41% to $1.11. During quarter two, Disney repurchased 19.9 million shares for about $1.5 billion. This, along with the historical record sales and growth, led to the increase in earnings per share. So, in conclusion, Disney has had an outstanding year in 2014. Going over the numbers and prospects makes Disney seem like an unattainable giant in the entertainment industry. Disney is more than just a movie maker or theme park, it is made up of many components. They have products, franchises, movie companies, animation studios, video games, mobile technologies, theme parks, resorts and a brand that everybody knows. They are continue, continually making efforts to create, innovate, and expand their operations and products. An example of this is their recent requirement of Marker Studios. Marker Studios is a short-form video space company that Disney wants to use to enhance brand recognition. Disney also has been expanding its operations into Asian markets, particularly China. China's middle class and upper class have been growing quickly and are expected to continue to grow. Also, with such population size and close living arrangements, Disney estimates the ability to reach 330 million guests within a three-hour distance from Hong Kong Disneyland. With that, it can easily be said that Disney is doing great and will almost indefinitely continue to do great for quite a while. And I would absolutely invest in Disney. And here's my resources. And thank you, and hope you enjoy.